All right. So in this example, our CIO has asked us to set up wireless access for contractors and contractors using the WLAN should be given less priority than employees and they should be confined to the contractor VLAN. They should be able to reach the uh, 10, 1, 10, 15 on port 80 and that's kind of emulating access to a local web server that a contractor might need access to. But uh, right now that's it. We're gonna keep it pretty simple and then you can extrapolate as you build your policies. Uh, also, uh, the contractor should be able to reach the internet. The CIO asked that we uh, not create a new WLAN to accomplish this. So basically, we're going to have the contractors use PEEP, and this would emulate them. Uh, you know, we're just going to keep them on the WT data for now. Uh, there's a few different ways to skin this cat. We're going to look at some different scenarios coming up, but this is one where a contractor would need to be an authenticated contractor. There's also points where contractors may need to just be authorized as a kind of a guest. Uh, but right now we're going to keep them uh, authenticated and they should be given access to VLAN 66. They should be able to reach AD uh, on port 80, which is a web server. <laughs> and then, again, just to illustrate that concept. And then uh, they should be given less priority than employees. Hmm. That, we're talking about wireless priority. So... What we can do there is we can use WMM and background contractor access, kind of like we do guest. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So first things first, I've got uh, our ICE server over here. We need to create a new rule in our policy. So we're still gonna be a wireless policy. We're gonna come down here, authorization policy, and I'm gonna put this rule below uh, employee access because contractors would typically be used less uh, than employees accessing, uh, authenticating against ICE, right? So we're gonna say contractor access. Now, uh, we're gonna do the same thing to match this group. So right now, uh, contractor group is defined in Active Directory. So we're gonna do the same thing we did for employees, but, uh, I've also been told that sometimes contractors use a local group and ICE call to contractors as well, which we'll need to set up later. But right now, we're going to go ahead and just do the same uh, external repository attribute. So let's go ahead and click up here to add a new attribute. We're going to go to identity group, external identity group 81. We're going to change this to contractors, click save. Actually, remember, we're not saving these right now to the studio, we're just clicking use. It's just that button's right there and it makes me kind of click it. All right, so the next thing is we need a result for contractors, which we don't have yet. We're doing this one kind of backwards because we didn't configure the controller yet, uh, but we're going to here in just a second. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new authorization profile. And we're gonna say this is contractor access. Now, uh, what we want to do here uh, is one thing we said, ABC, got airspace, ACL, all that kind of good stuff. So we could come up here to airspace. It's not a common task. Okay. And we're going to say airspace, we're going to do QoS level. So it's not a common task, but we can still create it under advanced attributes. And we're going to put them back on bronze. So we're going to add that. And if you look down there, you can see that that was applied. The next thing is we're going to have to have the airspace ACL that permits access to the Active Directory and to the internet. We don't have that created yet. But if we know the name we're going to name it, we can go ahead and call it out. So let's go ahead and uh, find our airspace ACL in here. And we'll call this contractor ACL. So contractor underscore ACL. Uh, the next thing is we know that contractor VLAN is 66. So we're going to make sure up here 
that the contractor is given access to just 66. That should be everything. We're going to click save. So we've just actually created uh, an advanced tribute. You saw me do that. That was using dictionaries to do that. And uh, because sometimes we need to do a lot more than just common tasks. But now we got to go over to our WLAN and we need to make sure that we've got those interfaces. So let's come back here and uh, first of all, we're going to go to controllers and just make sure we've got that 66 interface. We do. It's already there. So the next thing is we're going to go to security and we're going to do our access control list and we're going to create a new one. This is contractor. So go ahead and add a new rule for this. And remember, uh, they were supposed to be given access to the uh, 10.1.10.15 uh, only for port 80. So this is a specific slash 32 we're matching, and it's TCP. Destination port is going to be HTTP. We're going to permit that. Now, we know the contractor network is 10.1.66.x network. The gateway is at dot one. So we also need to make sure that they have internet access. So they're going to need DNS. They're going to need access to the gateway. So we're going to go ahead and create, uh, before we do those rules, we're going to go ahead and create the return traffic for this. And I'm going to do this for the next two rules, and then we'll go over it in the ACLC. So don't have to sit here and wait. All right. So on the rules here, we've got uh, any to the DNS server. Uh, well, it's for that port 80. So any of the the 10, 1, 10, 15 on port 80, and then the return for that. One rule should work either direction, but I just it helps for people to get used to this. This is the way I teach it in the wireless classes until you're used to dealing with the directions because it's from the perspective of the controller. So we got that for DNS, we've got it for that HTTP port, and then we've got it for any, for that segment. There's an implicit deny at the bottom of every ACL, which will catch all the rest of the traffic. And so that should meet the requirement that we set out with. Now, the thing was, is that they reached contractor VLAN, should be able to reach port 80, okay, and not create a new WLAN at this point, plus less priority to employees. So we did the WMM rule. Uh, we're doing it on the same uh, WLAN that we have employee traffic on, but contractors will get bronze instead of platinum. So they're gonna have less priority, or bronze instead of silver. So a little bit less priority there. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and test this out now. I'm going to Turn on my WLAN adapter and we'll turn it back on. I authenticated as a contractor the last time. So we're going to authenticate uh, as a contractor this time. Now, let's go up here to monitor, clients, and we see we already have an IP address here 10199.100. I've got a username of contractor1. Okay, I am on the WT Data 3 uh, network. Then down here at the bottom, you can see that I was given contractor ACL. Okay, and if we keep going down, uh, you can see QoS level, we were given bronze. So pretty straightforward there, actually. Now, the last request is, could we reach the AD server on port 80? So I'm gonna record the screen for this one. All right, so, uh, that was a, this is the first time we've used this VLAN and it was a simple uh, IP helper address that was missing off that VLAN. So once I added that uh, IP helper address, all right, then we were getting the IP address on the actual client device. And so that is good now.
Let me go ahead and uh, disconnect and I will record this one and I'll show you the connection process. But remember that we are a contractor using the WT data network. So we connected right away that time. And if you click on clients, again, we can look here. Now, the thing we were, we were still trying to do was reach the, the web interface of the AD server. So go there now. There we go. That's what alerted us to the problem, actually, because the controller got the IP. The client didn't. So uh, anyway, it was whenever the controller tried to terminate the client, that was the problem. So uh, this is a success. Now let's see if we can go to uh, the ICE page because we should not be able to get there. Go to ICE-3. And you notice it's not even going. So can't get there. All right. So that should do that. Um, we met that objective. We'll see you for the next one. Cheers.